After my last video for the Grizzly Challenge, it got me thinking about figured woods and what the trees themselves would have looked like. It just so happens that Bobby Hackett of Hackett Enterprises called to tell me they were about to mill some pretty unique logs and wanted to know if I'd be interested in coming out for the milling. I said yes. When I showed up, they had the burliest red maple I'd ever seen lying in the middle of a Lucas Mill frame. This tree looked like it hurt when it grew. I have seen plenty of bandsaw mills at work, but this was the first time I had ever seen a Lucas mill in real life. With a bar and chain like a chainsaw and it being incredibly portable, it's a pretty slick machine and it's got massive cutting capacity. Once the first cut was made, it was time to see what beauty lie inside this ugly tree. Like opening a present, LB slid the top off to reveal a hundred pockets of curl and bark inclusions. After the second cut, we all knew this log was really special. Swirling sunbursts of light radiated through the wood and this came fresh off of a chain cut, which is pretty rough absolutely beautiful. After sticking and stacking the flitch in sequence, Glenn put them away to dry for a while and came back with a present for me. A few small cherry burls, perfect for turning. Then they loaded up a log I was unfamiliar with, the Blue Atlas Cedar. This tree needed to be taken off of the Montpelier property, the home of James Madison, the fourth president of the United States, and it was big. When they cut into it, I was certain it was going to look like Eastern Red Cedar, which can be almost purple, and I was wrong. A little research and the Eastern Red Cedar is actually part of the Juniper family, while the Atlas Cedar is originally from Europe and a true cedar. At almost 42 inches across, this cedar would make a beautiful one-piece tabletop once dry. Back at my shop, I proved that I too could break down logs, albeit smaller. I cut out one of the smaller burls out of the log, then ripped it through the pith, the center of the tree. Then kept cutting small, shallow blanks out of it until I started to see the figure of the burl. Those shallow blanks would become small bowls or dishes, but the burl I wanted to experiment with. Balancing live edge with the figure of the burl. I drilled a hole for a wormwood screw, then mounted the cherry in the chuck. Working with the piece in a pretty raw form meant I had to turn slow due to the uneven weight of the wood. Plus it was sopping wet, so the uneven weight was amplified. Once I had the bottom of the bowl shaped, I cut a dovetailed recess in the bottom and flipped the piece around to hollow out the bowl. I have to say, at this point, it's hard to say if I'm turning out most of the crazy figure trying to get that live edge feature, or if it's showing up in the walls of the bowl. Once I had my wall thickness close to where I wanted it, I grabbed my newest favorite turning tool, the left hand bowl scraper. It's just big and beefy and leaves an incredible tool finish. This little cherry burl had some incredible grain, but nothing like that woodworker's fairy tale maple. I dream about what I could make with that stuff in due time. I'm going to send this bowl to my best friend Maggie. She works for the Department of Natural Resources in South Carolina, and this will be raffled off to benefit the South Carolina American Fisheries Society. The proceeds help to fund scholarships for kids studying fisheries conservation and management. The future stewards of our oceans, beaches, marine life, fishing holes, and the planet. Something near and dear to my heart. All right, guys, that's it for this time. I think this bowl turned out pretty cool. Uh, it was a live edge bowl. Next week, I'm actually going to turn a more traditional bowl um, out of another burl, but I'm going to make it more educational. And it's actually a collaboration video between uh, James Wright and myself. If you don't know James, he runs the channel Wood by Wright. He's a hand tool woodworker. He's going to turn his on a spring pole lathe. I'm going to turn mine on my powered lathe. And we're both going to take you through the steps of how we accomplish um, a bowl. This video was more of a field trip, short film, cinematic-y type uh, deal for with 
uh, Hackett Enterprises, and I consider them friends now. Um, ever since the first time I went to Hackett, uh, I was blown away by their selection and their process, and they're just really, it's a family-run business. Uh, I love supporting them. Um, they support me. They throw me some stuff every once in a while. They reached out and said, hey, Will, we've got these pretty unique, crazy logs. Do you want to come out and check it out? And I was like, heck yeah. And when I was there, uh, Glenn said, oh yeah, by the way, um, I saved these cherry burls for you, these little cherry burls for you. And I was like, dude, you're the best. If this is your first time here, feel free to check out some of my other videos. I do cinematic style, woodworkery, metalwork stuff. I don't have a super regular schedule. I put out the videos as I can. Um, t-shirts. There is a Teespring campaign going on right now where you can get William Walker Company swag, t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, you name it. I'm also on Patreon. A lot of people have asked me if I'm on Patreon. Yes, I'm on Patreon. Do I push it? No. If you want to become a patron on Patreon, head over to there. Pledge a dollar or two. No pressure. I'll still make the videos if you don't. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you like what I'm doing, let me know in the comments section. Until next time, guys, I'm Will Walker. This is the William Walker Company Project Channel. I'll see you guys real soon. Thanks for watching.